Basketball season is upon us. Will Montana State and Eastern Washington defend their tournament titles or will we crown a new champion? The road to Boise begins now. Welcome to Big Sky Basketball Tip-Off presented by Idaho Central Credit Union. Welcome into Big Sky Tip Off. I'm your host, Megan Robinson. Today is all about the Weber State Wildcats. The men's program lost reigning Big Sky MVP Dylan Jones to the NBA. However, head coach Eric Duff is confident that there are plenty of guys in that locker room who can fill that void. I'd like to welcome in head coach Duff to the show now alongside one of his players, Blaze Three. This is your 19th season at Weber, your third as the head coach of the Wildcats. What do you think your biggest areas of growth from year one until now are? Wow. Yeah, it's been a long time since we got this thing started. Over the course of, of this 19 years, we've we've transformed in a much faster paced team, more free flowing, read and react. So the game's changed a lot. Uh, but but our core values have stayed the same. We want to recruit high character, competitive people from great families who want to get their degrees. And, uh, you know, those culture things have never changed within our program and, and they won't as long as I'm the head coach here. Place. You're only in your second season as a Wildcat after transferring from the D2 level. What were the challenges of going from playing D2 basketball to Division One? Yeah, I feel like um, there was obviously a lot of challenges. You know, when you when you hit the transporter from Division Two, everyone's like, "What's the transition going to be like?" And uh, for me, I feel like the biggest adjustment was probably just the the speed was pretty much the same, but the athleticism that you're going to see at the Division One level is a lot different. So that was a adjustment I had to make. You know, I really noticed it. Um, first time I really felt it was probably against when we beat St. Mary's last year, like seeing those big men versus the the bigs you're going to see in the big sky is a big difference. But other than that, I feel like the skills um, pretty similar and the speed's pretty similar. It's just the athleticism a little different. Coach, one of the big losses this offseason was, of course, big sky MVP Dylan Jones, first round NBA draft pick. How do you replace a player like that this year? Well, Dylan was a tremendous player for us, obviously. Uh, you know, he's not only a great player, he's a great student in the community. You know, he was the whole package while he was here. But, uh, you know, we've got good players in the program. And I think uh, our three returning uh, starters uh, that are seniors are, are excited to, you know, to have to step up and, and do more this year on an individual basis. So we feel good about the players we have in our program and they're, they're, they're more than capable and, you know, we're ready to get this thing going. Obviously losing Dylan, it's, it's a tough blow for, you know, the whole community and the team, but we can't really replace the talent like that, but we can get better at every position. And I think the coach did a great job this off season, kind of recruiting, high character guys, like you said, and guys that want to win. And I feel like as a team, we've just, we've gotten better because everyone's more connected and everyone wants to win. So um, the goal at the end of the season is to win a big sky championship and get to that tournament. So I feel like the coach has done a great job putting us in that position. 12 and two at home last season. Why do you think D event center gives you such an advantage? We've always had just a great fan base here, great tradition with our program. We've been fortunate over the 19 years. And then before, before we got here, uh, they've, they've had, you know, tremendous players and you know, our fans really get into, into basketball here in the Ogden community. And, and, uh, I think they love our, the, the, the quality of play that we've had and, and the, the style that we play. And then it's easy to root for these guys. We've got, uh, you know, we've got great, great guys in the program and they get out in the community and, and they're visible and, and, uh, they're always doing community service stuff. And so I think it just, it just, it breeds a relationship with, uh, with our community that's, uh, you know, it's really strong. And these people want to get out and support a good product. I don't want to be biased, but I feel like Weber has the best arena. Um, you know, we see, I think it's an 11,000 capacity and we fill it out pretty good. So, I mean, like I said, you're going to you walk in, you're going to smell popcorn, you're going to smell the electricity. And then on a game day, all the lights are going to be on. You know, we have the overhead, the, the, the Tron, we have, we have everything. So, I mean, when you look around the league and you look at some other places you're going to play at, you're not going to get quite like an arena that we have because we 
in my opinion, we kind of have like a high major arena and a high major feel. So I feel like it's hard for people to come in and, and compete and play well in an arena, especially when the fans are really rooting behind the home team. So I feel like we do a great job bringing the community in and being out and letting people see us. And that all translate back into them coming and wanting to watch us play and buying tickets. After the break, hear from the Weber State women's team. In the heart of Montana's untamed wilderness, a legend is brewing. Jeremiah Johnson Brewing, the official beer of the Big Sky Conference. Brewed with the rugged spirit of the West. Jeremiah Johnson is simply a world-class, straightforward, no-nonsense beer. Do well. Welcome back to Big Sky Tip-Off. I'm your host, Megan Robinson. Gentile Jackson is entering her second season as head coach with 10 new players in her locker room. Her roster consists of five returners, five freshmen, and five transfers. However, Jackson sees a lot of benefit to building your own roster. She joins me now alongside one of those new additions, Rose Bubakar. Coach, this is your second season at Weber State. What did you learn from your first season that you can build upon year two? Yeah, I think we learned a lot. Um, obviously, getting the lay of the land for the big sky is important. Um, nothing's a better teacher than doing it, going through it in person. So learned a lot there. Um, had some good experiences. Definitely got a feel for this conference, you know, the level of play, the uh, how competitive it is. And I think moving forward, just looking forward to uh, taking steps in the right direction to, to be a high competitor in, in the big sky. And Rose, this is your first year at Weber State. What was it about Coach Jackson that drew you to the Wildcats? Uh, what mainly drew me to the Wildcats was the way that uh, Coach Jacks like understood where I was coming from. Um, like it was kind of a rough last year for me at uh, BYU, and so explaining like my struggles and like how I wanted you know, to pursue not only in basketball, but with my life, you know, with my last, uh, my last year of basketball. And so she understood where I was coming from. And so that definitely like helped me choose Weaver. Rose is one of 10 new players. You got to kind of build your roster through the recruiting process. What were some of the qualities you were looking for in either the transfers or the freshmen that you were recruiting? Yeah, it's been exciting building our roster, you know, bringing in kids like Rose, who we feel like fits what we're trying to do on and off the court. So, um, you know, we, we want kids who want to come in, they want to get better, they want to learn, they want to work. Um, you know, people who are contributing not just on the court, but off the court as well to Weaver and the community. Um, you know, we're big on that. We want we want just responsible young adults who handle their business um, and feel really good about the group that we've brought in. Rose, besides coach, as a new player, who are some of the people within the Weber State Women's Basketball Program, teammates, staffers, whoever, who have helped you sort of acclimate to life as a transfer student? Oh, uh, I think everybody has came across because I know like with my old school, it was kind of like rough, like having like the same like relationships that I've had, like, you know, when I first started at like BYU. And so like, you know, people change, like obviously like coaching staff and all that has changed. And so it kind of like also changed like um, my confidence and like basketball wise. And so it's with coming here, like, I think like the fact that like almost everybody is new, it's like, we're all going through this together. So it kind of makes like an easier transition. And like, obviously it makes basketball more fun when you like really have a close relationship with everybody on the team. What are the benefits of having those five returners on the roster and how have they helped sort of everybody transition into this new squad? Yeah, I think they've been great. I think they've been really welcoming, um, you know, kind of just open arms, accepted everybody and welcomed them into Weber and our program. Um, there's definitely been a lot of on-court stuff that they've helped them through or answered some questions. So I think it's been a great group. You know, the returners have done a good job, but even some of the transfers, you know, Rose is a transfer. She's new here first year, but she's extremely experienced. She's had a lot of years of college basketball under her belt. So really just helping, you know, those younger uh, freshmen or underclassmen trying to 
help them guide them and help them start to feel comfortable. Our returners have definitely done a good job showing them the ropes, making them feel welcome from day one. Um, and I've been really excited and pleased with how well our group has been jiving on and off the court. Rose, from the player's perspective, how would you describe this camaraderie off the court that coach is talking about? Personally, I just think it's like really great that like everyone has came in like um, warm welcoming with open arms. It feeds into the basketball standpoint where like when you have a good relationship on and off the court, um, it also like affects, you know, um, with like how you like how you play, how you practice and like everything else in life. So um, it just it just makes it like really fun and easy. And I and basketball should be fun. It's supposed to be fun. The direction that the coaches are going, like I totally see their vision. I like the way um, they're thinking and where this is going. Coming up, Coulter Nuanez and Krista Redpath join the show to give us a breakdown of Big Sky Basketball. Welcome back to Big Sky Tip-Off. I'm Megan Robinson, joined now by two of our Big Sky basketball analysts, Krista Redpath and Coulter Nuanez. Guys, let's just get right to it. What were your initial thoughts on the Big Sky basketball preseason rankings? Coulter, I'll go to you first. It's interesting when you analyze the men's league because there's so few returners these last couple of years. That's sort of a symptom of where we're at in Division One college basketball. But the one school that has had returners two seasons, two off seasons in a row uh, has been Montana. And I think that that's reflected when you look at, at the polls last year, they returned six guys, which is an unheard of number for mid major teams. And uh, this year they have a couple stalwarts coming back uh, led by Brandon Whitney, who's going to be a sort of an unprecedented fifth year starter there at Montana. I wasn't shocked on the women's side. I, I really expected NAU to come out on top. When you look at the fact that they played in the conference championship the last three years, they return a nucleus of players um, led by preseason MVP Sophie Glancy um, and also Leah Beatty at the guard position. Um, returning both the Moran sisters and you mix in a Taylor Feldman and a Sanaya Neverson. And I look at NAU just having um, that nucleus back but also just a year of maturity under their belt and so I wasn't I wasn't shocked by that um, I look at the Montana schools battling out both Montana State and Montana when you take a look at Montana State um, they also uh, were faced with injuries last year but they this year um, with the transfer of Esmeralda Morales as well as Lexi Deaton possibly coming back from this ACL they're loaded they're locked and loaded Montana State men have reached three consecutive NCAA tournaments after winning three big sky tournament titles. Who would be the dark horse on the men's side to maybe dethrone the Bobcats? I thought, first of all, I thought it was interesting that Montana State got so much love in the preseason polls because they do lose a lot. Of course, they return Brian Garaki, they return Brandon Walker, but Robert Ford was the heart and soul of that team. So he's certainly going to be tough to replace. I actually probably would have said that Montana State would have been one of my dark horses if they weren't so highly rated in the preseason polls, but they got a whole bunch of respect in the preseason polls. Uh, one team that Chris and I actually previewed on our, our series Big Sky Hoops Hits two weeks ago is Northern Arizona on the men's side. I think that they have more continuity than a lot of the other teams in the league. You look at Trenton McLaughlin, who's leading returning scorer in the league, really, really talented guy. You look at Carson Town, he's my kind of player. I mean, he's the guy that could fit in on every single team in the Big Sky Conference. He doesn't need to shoot it. He doesn't need to dribble it. He just sets screens and rebounds and plays defense. Northern Arizona, I know, was picked in the middle of the league, but I think they could, they could definitely make some noise. They proved it last year. I mean, they beat every good team in the league at least once. Uh, they just have to figure out a way to 
sweep some of those good teams to get into that top third of the league standings. Coulter, you just brought up Trent McLaughlin from NAU. He, of course, is the preseason MVP in the Big Sky. Krista, you mentioned Sophie Clancy, the women's MVP. I'll start with you, Krista. Did the voters get it right choosing those two Lumberjacks as our preseason MVPs? Well, I think they definitely did. When you look at these players and what they have contributed to the Big Sky, and of course, I can allude to Sophie Glancy just being a force down low. I mean, she was a unanimous first team All Big Sky Conference selection last year. Her physical skills, strength, agility, quickness around the basket, um, she really separated herself. On the men's side, I think you could have got a, a variety of different ways, uh, but Trent McLaughlin's certainly a, a um, worthy candidate, no doubt. It's a great story there at NAU, too. First of all, they've, they've poured a bunch of money into athletics, which I think is benefiting them a bunch. You've seen both their basketball programs get better. But also the McLaughlin brothers are one of the great stories in the big sky, right? Like Alex McLaughlin's one of the best football players in the conference. Trent, his older brother, one of the best basketball players in the conference. And you have to think that I mean, both those guys probably had opportunities to go elsewhere. They didn't because they're there together. That's a cool story. So uh, hopefully people that resonates with people. Kristen and Coulter, we know NAU women, Montana and Montana state men are the favorites in both the coaches and the media polls to win the Big Sky Conference this year. Krista, I will go to you first. Who are you picking to win the Big Sky Conference? Give me both your men's and women's picks. Well, I, I definitely had NAU. Um, to, to win with the Montana schools really coming in uh, hot and on the men's side as well. I think Coach DeCure has done a fantastic job um, bringing in um, some really great transfers, but also building around Brandon Whitney. I mean, he's one of the only um, Grizz players to average double figures for all four of his years playing for Montana, just a veteran guard. I also think with the transfer of Patterson from Sac State at the guard position, Montana definitely has all the weapons to look like they are in the forefront to win the big sky. I picked Montana state. And the reason I picked Montana state is I think that Trisha Benford has established herself as the most consistent and best coach in the conference. I thought last year was one of her best coaching jobs. I remember a post that they had on their Instagram page of their bench celebrating and their bench was KJ Lamardo and Taylor Jansen and Lexi Deedon and all these all league caliber players that were all hurt. And Trisha Binford got through that season and they made a run at it. I mean, they were in the semifinals last year. They finished fourth, even though they had more injury bad luck uh, than I've ever seen. You bring all that back, you bring in Esmeralda Morales, and I just think they have a chance to be a really special team. On the men's side, I voted for Montana just because they have the most returners, but I think it's so wide open with all these new players and so many new roster complexions throughout the league. We really just won't know. It's, it's going to take till February until these teams really coalesce. They really start working the ball around and, and playing together. And look at what happened last year. I mean, Montana State was up and down, up and down all year long. But then they coalesced and they played so well down the stretch. And then they had one of the great tournament runs we have ever seen. So that's what it's going to take. Who comes together at the end? Who plays down the stretch? Travis Takir has proven he can get his team to do that at Montana. Matt Logie, same thing at Montana State. Uh, and I think there's a couple other coaches like Eric Duff at Weber and Steve Smiley at, at Northern Colorado that have proven that as well. So who could get their team to come together? Even though I voted for Montana, I think the men's side is wide open. Krista Coulter, less than five months, and we will see who was crowned a new champion up in Boise. Can't wait to see you both at that tournament. Still to come, what can fans expect from our championship week? Our friends from Visit Boise stop by to share all the city has to offer. Definitely. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks. See you next week. Bye. All right. Thanks. All right. Take care. Bye, everyone. Welcome back to Big Sky Basketball Tip-Off. I'm Megan Robinson. Our tournament is in Boise every year, so who better to have on the show than someone from Visit Boise, Lucas Gebhardt. The tournament has been in Boise since 2019. What impact does the Big Sky Basketball Tournament have on the city of Boise? We think it's about a $6.5 million uh, total economic impact um, to to the city. And so that what, what we mean by that is um, all the hotel spending, all of the 
um, money that's spent at, at restaurants and shops and ticket sales and, and things like that. We think about 13,000 people or so uh, go to the tournament. That includes local fans as well as fans that are traveling to Boise. And we think about 4,300 fans or so travel to Boise um, to watch this tournament from the various big sky markets. So it, it definitely has a huge impact for the city. and we're, we're excited to have it once again in 25. For those who have not been to Boise, like myself, what kinds of things can they expect to do there outside of the tournament? The cool part about our tournament is all the all the fans can stay in our in our downtown hotels and be walking distance from the game. So if you fly, you don't have to rent a car. Our airport's seven minutes, our downtown is seven minutes away from our airport. We have tons of great outdoor recreation activities. We have a 30 mile long bike trail that runs along our river, both sides of our river. We also have tons of hot springs that are within a couple hours drive of, of Boise. Some are under an hour from Boise. Um, we have a great wine country that's about 45 minutes outside of downtown as well. So Idaho's got some really underrated wine that we definitely want. Uh, people to check out if, if they end up coming here. We were rated by National Geographic as one of the best in the world destinations to visit in 2025. So that's something that we just got awarded. We're pretty excited about that. So uh, we got lots of things to do here, whether it's our great restaurant scene or outdoor recreation or just the walkable and accessibility to, to all the things to do in our downtown. One of the big things that people want to know when they go to a new city is where are some of the restaurants that I must try? Some of the best restaurants in town are some of our Basque restaurants. We have an entire block in our downtown that's dedicated to that Basque culture and that Basque heritage. We also have a restaurant in downtown called Kin that uh, their chef just won a James Beard Award. That's the first James Beard Award that um, any restaurant or chef in our city has won. So that's something else that we're pretty excited about. I can't wait to get up there and experience Boise in a few months for myself. And I appreciate you taking time to put a spotlight on your city. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for previewing the season with me on Big Sky Basketball Tip-Off presented by Idaho Central Credit Union. I'm your host, Megan Robinson, and I can't wait to see you all in Boise in March.